Okay, so here's a little flight I did a couple of days ago that I thought some of you might find interesting. It wasn't a flight that I did with the intention of making a YouTube video, but I kind of realized that no one else has done a video like this, so I thought it'd be worth putting online because it might be useful, or like I said, some of you might find it interesting. So, um, yeah, so as the uh, video title suggests, on this flight I was doing a direct comparison between the Roncam Fun and the Insta360 GO 2. And the reason why I wanted to do this test was I was sent the Insta360 GO 2 for free. And obviously I'm, I'm very grateful for that, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep the camera or not, or if, if I wanted to sell it to you know fund buying some more aircraft parts. So yeah, I wanted to do this comparison between the GoTo and the Fun to you know try and work out which one of the two cameras is better and you know whether I'd be happy to stay with the Fun that I had originally. Now you might think that you know I'm being silly and that you know the the Insta360 GoTo is obviously the better camera and I should keep it. But I'd argue that that's possibly not necessarily the case, and I, you know I think it really depends on the person, whether they prefer one camera or the other. There's a couple of things about the GoTo that I don't like, and you know that I think Fun can do better. Uh, so yeah, this is why I was doing the test. I kind of figured if I put both cameras on the same aircraft at the same time, and they both recorded the same flight, I could then do you know, what I'm doing now. And I could watch back the footage of both of them simultaneously, so I could do a direct comparison. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's what we're doing here. So just to mention, the day that I did this flight, it was a pretty windy day. Uh, I think the wind was blowing around 15 to 20 miles an hour, which is probably a lot windier than I'd normally fly. But on this occasion, I sort of decided that's actually probably a good thing. And the reason for that is, obviously on both these cameras, one of the things I want to test is how good is the stabilization. And I kind of figured that the best way to test that is to basically shake the cameras to the extreme. <laughs> So yeah, flying on a windy day meant that the aircraft did get knocked around quite a lot, as you've probably already seen here. And that meant I could you know, really test out the stabilization capabilities of both of the cameras. We'll just mention as well that you might be able to see a little bit of jello on both of these um, video feeds here. Now this isn't really a reflection of the cameras, it's more of a reflection of the 3D printed mount that I made to hold the cameras. In all honesty, I kind of just rushed that mount. I just kind of knocked it together quite quickly. And um, yeah, it's probably not the best mount for isolating vibration. So don't critique the, the jello in the cameras in the video feeds here. That's, that's not really the camera's fault. It's, it's my own fault. So uh, yeah, so the two video feeds you're seeing here at the moment are the raw footage from the cameras before I've stabilized them. And as you can see, the uh, footage is um, a little bit choppy there with the windy conditions. But it's also pretty obvious that straight away the Insta360 GO 2 has got the superior image quality, which isn't really surprising because the Insta360 GO 2 is, you know, it's a more expensive camera, it's got a better camera sensor, it's got a better chipset processing and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that's not really surprising. I will say though that you know I don't think the the quality of the one cam from is that bad. Uh, certainly the colours do look a little bit washed out. The contrast isn't the best, but these are things that can be fixed in post production. Maybe not quite as well as the Inter360 Go, but if you spend a little bit of time just sort of tweaking some of the various settings on your video editor, you can make the footage look a little bit better, and you, know, you can certainly make it look better than I've done here just kind of washed it but yeah out of the box the insta360 go to is the, the better camera for image quality but the main point of this test is to test the stabilization so let's now have a look at that so what you're now seeing is uh, at the bottom here on the left is the one cam from footage that's being stabilized with gyro flow and on the right you're seeing the insta360 Go to footage that's been stabilized with Insta360's studio software uh, using the flow state stabilization. Now, again, you can probably tell straight away that the Go to footage looks 
a lot better here. Stabilization is just clearly working a lot better. That was actually a little bit disappointed with how rough the footage from the fun looked. I've used the fun obviously before on other flights and stabilizations work pretty well but on this particular flight it doesn't look that good and that could be down to the fact that I was flying it in especially windy conditions. You know the, the camera's getting shook around a lot more so therefore the stabilization algorithms and whatnot are having to fire a lot harder and maybe it's just beyond the capability of what the gyroflow software can do. Now it's also worth me mentioning that in gyroflow uh, the program, there's, there's a lot of settings that you can tweak and fine tune and it's entirely possible that I just haven't done a very good job of you know getting the best possible settings. It could be that if somebody else was to take the same footage they might be able to get a smoother output than what I've got. But yeah, ultimately I, I don't feel like the, uh, the footage from the Runcam Fun looks all that good. Now, it is worth mentioning that the sensor on the one cam from is a rectangular sensor, whereas the GoTo has a square sensor. And that does put a big limitation on the thumb. It means that the stabilization can't work as well on the pitch axis as it can on the roll axis. And that, that's why you occasionally see these black bars appear at the top and the bottom of the, the image there, just because the software's kind of ran out of image to use, if that makes sense. Uh, the GoTo, for comparison, has got the square sensor, which means that you know, the stabilization can move up and down on the pitch axis just as much as it can on the roll axis. It's got more of an image to work with. So that probably does explain, at least to some degree, why the stabilization is better on the go-to. But yeah, ultimately not feeling super impressed with the stabilization on the thumb at the moment. Now, one thing I want to mention is the on the go-to footage that you're seeing here, which has been stabilized with the flow state stabilization, it's effectively got a horizon lock enabled. So for the most part, as you're watching this footage, you'll see that the horizon is staying reasonably level throughout the flight. No matter how much the aircraft banks to the left or the right, the horizon is staying mostly level. Now in gyroflow, there's an option to do the same thing. You can activate a horizon lock, but for some reason, and I don't know whether it's just I'm doing something wrong, but for some reason I can't get Horizon Lock to work with the one kind of fun. And for that reason, as you can see, the horizon is moving around uh, quite a lot. Now, on the Insta360 Studio software, there's two types of stabilization you can use. You can either use a flow state stabilization, which is what I've used now, or you can use an alternative one, which is called FPV stabilization, which is where there is no horizon lock enabled. So what you're now seeing on the right hand side here is the 360 Go footage stabilized with the FPV stabilization. And I think that kind of levels the playing field a little bit. So now both the farm and the GoTo have the same kind of stabilization going on. Neither of them have got horizon lock, so they're both allowing the horizon to move a little bit. So yeah, it's a, it's a more of a direct comparison, I think. Now still the footage from the thumb doesn't look that good. The go-to is definitely doing the better job of the two, but the thumb footage doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's certainly better than the, the raw footage that we started with. But after sort of doing this comparison, I did get to thinking that maybe the whole gyroflow approach isn't necessarily the best when it comes to the thumb. Because the thumb sensor, uh, I'm not exactly sure what size it is, but it's designed so that it can take a certain amount of cropping and still output a 1080p video stream. So what I got to thinking was that maybe I should step over using gyroflow and go back to an older tried and tested method that I've used before using a free bit of software called DaVinci Resolve. Now, for those of you who don't know what DaVinci Resolve is, it's a, a free video editing program. Uh, it's a very good program. It's uh, very advanced. I think it's used by quite a lot of professionals. I don't use it a whole lot, but what I do use it for specifically is for stabilizing footage because it's got a very, very good optical stabilizer. So I figured I would take the footage from the fun, disregard the gyro data, and I'd just try stabilizing it in DaVinci. So what you're now seeing on the screen is the fun footage that's been 
stabilized with DaVinci. And I think you'll probably agree that this looks a lot better. It looks a lot better than the footage that was done with Gyroflow, at least in my opinion. The turns are looking a bit smoother, there's a lot less kind of shaking and jumping around. And it looks a little bit more on par with what the Go 2 stabilization looks like, uh, especially with the FPV stabilization. Now, obviously, it's not as good as the Go 2, but if you bear in mind that this footage is being done on a camera which is one sixth the price of the Go 2 and it's being done with a bit of free computer software, I think actually you do have to appreciate that the results are, you know, respectable and they're quite decent. Now, one thing just to mention about DaVinci Resolve, though, is that you do need a pretty powerful computer to be able to run it. Now, my computer, now it's not the best by any means, but it's certainly a pretty decent computer, but it still took close to two hours for DaVinci Resolve to analyze, stabilize, and then render the final footage, which is obviously a very, very long time. Now, for comparison to a analyze, stabilize, and render the same footage on Gyroflow took about 20 minutes. So I guess it's all down to how much uh, kind of time and effort you want to put into, you know, getting the, the final outcome. But yeah, um, it's been an interesting test to do, and uh, I'm not really sure if it's actually really helped, <laughs> to be honest. Other than the stabilization, which obviously is a very big part of choosing which of the two cameras is the best, there are some other kind of things to take into account. I'm not going to go through all the specs of both the cameras because, you know, there's plenty of information out there, but I will just at the bottom of the screen here, I'll show the specs. And I'll just mention one or two that, you know, are kind of relevant. In terms of which camera is the best, uh, I mean, the thumb weighs less than the GoTo, especially when you take into account that to use the GoTo for its full capacity, you have to use the power adapter mount, which ends up weighing close to 50 grams. The thumb is only 10 grams. So, you know, depending on which aircraft you want to use that, that might make a big difference. The resolution, so the Go 2 has you know got much better resolution. I think the sensor on that is 1440p, whereas the thumb is only 1080. That doesn't really bother me though, because I only ever really upload videos at 1080p anyway. So you know that's not really an issue. Uh, one big plus for the Go 2 is that it is waterproof. I don't really tend to fly in the rain, but I do sometimes fly in the clouds. And for the thumb, which isn't waterproof, that might be a problem. Probably be okay, but yeah, there's always the risk that you fly through a cloud, the thumb might malfunction or shut down or something, whereas to go to wood. So it's definitely something to take into consideration. One other thing, actually, which is a bit of a random one, is the audio quality. Now, I'd say that both cameras have reasonably good audio quality, but when it comes to the wind noise, I think the Go 2 is actually a little bit better. If I just let some of the audio from the fun play for a moment, you can hear what it sounds like. So as you can tell, it's, uh, it's not the best. Um, you're very much hearing the rough sound of the winds there, and uh, you can hear the motor kind of... It, it just doesn't sound very good. Now, uh, for comparison, here's the same audio from the Insta360 GO 2. Now, I think you'll agree that sounds a little bit better. Um, it's not such an obnoxious noise. It's more of a kind of a background white noise. It's just a, it's like a deep rumbling, but it, it doesn't sound quite as harsh to the ears as the fun footage sounds. Now, I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. I mean, like, quite often in my videos, I'll just put music over the sound, and I think a lot of people do that. So it doesn't really matter whether the audio is good or bad, but I just thought it was something that was worth, worth mentioning there. So, uh, yeah, um, it's a hard one, isn't it? Like, which camera is the best? I said in my previous video that, like, I like my aircraft to, you know, for the most part, be as cheap as possible while still having decent parts. And that's because there's always that chance that one day you'll send your aircraft out there and you know it'll fly away or it'll crash. Now, if the aircraft was to fly away with the Go 2 on board, you know, I'd be pretty upset because that's an expensive camera that's gone and then that's a big expense I have to then pay out to buy another one. 
Whereas if the aircraft flew away with the thumb on board, yeah, I'd be annoyed, but I wouldn't be as annoyed because it's you know it's not so expensive to replace that camera. For me, that is a big factor. But I think ultimately, the biggest difference between these two cameras and the one which is probably playing in my mind the most, more so than the quality of stabilization, is the recording time capabilities of these cameras. The Insta360 GO 2 has an absolute maximum recording time of 30 minutes, and that's it. You cannot get any longer than that. I don't know why this is. I did reach out to Insta360 and ask them, but I haven't heard back yet. I don't know whether it's due to the camera might overheat or whether it's due to a limitation in the memory, because the GO 2 has a built-in memory. I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, on the GO 2, you can only record 30 minutes maximum and that is it now on the thumb i can record for you know pretty much as long as i like it can take a maximum of 128 gigabyte sd card in there which would probably get me hours and hours of recording now again this it kind of depends on what you plan to do i mean like on my hewing t1 which can only fly for about 20 to 30 minutes then yeah the go to is a perfectly good camera to use but on this flight here i'm flying my Volantrix Ranger, which you know can easily stay in the air for an hour, maybe two or three hours on a on a good day. And in that situation, having to go to on board would just be pointless because I'd only be able to record the first 30 minutes of flight. And obviously a lot of fixed wing aircraft um, can stay in the air for a lot longer than 30 minutes. So in that case, the go-to isn't really a particularly viable option. Like, yeah, you're going to get really, really good footage out of it, but you won't get your whole flight. That is something that bothers me. I like to know that if I put a camera on board my aircraft, I can record all of it. So that does make the thumb, to me, possibly the better camera, at least in the application of putting it on board a fixed wing aircraft. So I'm still not really sure what I'm gonna do. I don't know whether I'm gonna keep the Insta360 Go to or not. I mean, I guess I could just keep it and put it on my Hewing C1 and then just keep the thumb and keep it on the Volantrix Ranger and my other aircraft. Or, like I said earlier, I might sell it to fund buying more aircraft parts because I always need money for that, right? I don't know. We, we will see. I'll spend a bit more time thinking about it. But hopefully you found this video interesting to watch anyway. Like I said, uh, as far as I know, no one's done this direct comparison before. So maybe it's helpful to someone out there. And for the rest of you to watch this, I hope you just found it interesting. And uh, if you did, Please do feel free to give the video a thumbs up because yeah, that helps the YouTube algorithm and it helps me make a few peanuts in money to fund more projects. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Catch you next time. Bye.